Okay. Fourth grade ELA, text set seven, uh, illustrator study, Ford Cooper. Our goal is to notice how Ford Cooper's illustrations help to communicate the author's message. Today I'm going to read another book illustrated by Ford Cooper. This one is called Ruth and the Green Book. It is historical fiction. The story takes place in the United States South in the 1950s. What do you know about this part of the, the U.S. in the 1950s? So many places in the South are segregated during this time period. There are different rules for different people depending on the color of their skin. The story is about an African-American family traveling through the South during segregation. Many businesses like gas station hotels refuse to serve them because of the color of their skin. As you listen, look closely at Flora Cooper's illustrations. Think about how they help, the, help tell the story. It was a big day at our house when Daddy drove up in our very own automobile, a 1952 Buick. It is the most beautiful color. Daddy, Daddy calls it the sea mist green. He bought it for his new job. At first, we planned to go on a trip to visit Grandma in Alabama. I was so excited to travel across the country. I packed my own bag, and Mama said I could take Brown Bear with me for a company, even though I almost, I'm almost too old for him. As we drove out of Chicago, it felt funny to see the neighborhood disappear, and then the streets, and then the buildings. I love all the green grass and hills and trees. Daddy told lots of stories about when he was a boy in Alabama. He made us laugh. Eventually, we stopped and had a picnic that had picnic lunch that Mama had packed. She had been cooking all week to get ready for the trip. After driving for a long time, we stopped at a service station to fill up on gas. As Daddy was paying the station attendant, Mama asked for the key to the restroom. The man said we couldn't use the restrooms because they were for whites only. Mama and I had to go into the woods. I was embarrassed. But Mama said the people who should be ashamed of themselves were those service station owners. So the family wasn't allowed to use the restroom at the service station. It was for whites only. This was part of segregation. I was tired when Daddy stopped the automobile. I asked Mama where we were, and she said we were going to spend the night in a real hotel. We watched Daddy talk to the man behind the desk. Daddy was smiling, pointing to us, but the man shook his head and turned his back. Daddy comes back out and slammed the car door. He never slammed the door before, so I knew he was mad. I wonder what happened, but I knew somehow it wasn't a good time to ask him. Mama gave me a look that said, Ruth, just keep quiet, so that's what I did. So what do you think happened that made Ruth's father so angry? We kept on driving through the night. Mama took a turn so Daddy couldn't, could sleep. I fell asleep with Brown Bear as my pillow. We must have pulled off the road in the middle of the night because when I woke in the morning, we were all curled up in the car. I was stiff and hungry. Mama gave us cold biscuit and jam for breakfast. She said we should sing to cheer ourselves up. We sang a lot that day as we crossed the country. We had picnics at roadside stops for lunch and dinner because all the restaurants had signs in the window that said we couldn't eat there. It seemed like they were white-only signs everywhere outside of our Chicago neighborhood. I felt homesick, and I hugged Brown Bear close all day. When we were crossed into Tennessee, Daddy said his friend Eddie lived close by. He was sure he, we could sleep there. Eddie was so happy to see us. He gave me a big hug and told me that he knew me when I was li real little. His wife, Alice, cooked us a warm meal, and I ate too much. Daddy and Eddie used to play music in a band before they went off and fought in the war. They talked about how they traveled a lot back then and how they always had a hard time finding places to rest and eat. Daddy shook his head and said he had hoped that the war had changed things, but now he could see he was wrong. That night, I went to sleep to the sound of Daddy and Eddie playing music together. Brown Bear and I were happy to sleep in a real bed with a real pillow. The next day, as we loaded the car, I heard Eddie talking quietly to Mama and Daddy. Eddie warned them about what was ahead. Someone called Jim Crow. I heard Eddie tell them that however, however bad it was so far, it was only going to get worse for us. Maybe even dangerous as we went farther south. Then Eddie saw me listening, and he picked me up and told me not to worry. He said that I should look out for ESO service stations along the road because the people there would be nice to us. In the car, I asked Daddy who Jim Crow was, and he explained that Jim Crow wasn't a who. It was a bunch of ugly laws forbidding blacks and whites from mixing in any ways. I asked, why don't they want our business? I wasn't, I w wasn't our money just the same? It hurt my feelings to be so unwelcomed. But Mama sighed and reminded me that my job that day was to look for an ESO station. 
I spotted an ESA station near the Georgia border and sang out for Daddy to stop. Daddy filled the car up and asked the man if he knew where he would, could sleep for the night. The man showed us a pamphlet called the ne Negro Motorist Green Book. He explained that this book was started by a postman, <clears throat> Mr. Victor H. Green, to help black people who were traveling. It lists places in lots of states where we would be welcome to sleep, eat, shop, get a haircut, and all kinds of other information besides... Right away, Daddy bought our very own copy for 75 cents. Why does Mama want Rush to look for an East End station? <laughs> Mama read <clears throat> about a place nearby called a tourist home when we could stay, where we could stay for the night of our trip. Daddy called ahead, and sure enough, the lady told us to, to come right away. Then Mama gave me the green book and said I was in charge of keeping it. I couldn't stop reading it. All those places and all those states where we could go and not worry about being turned away. We reached the tourist home in the early morning, evening. Mrs. Melody, the owner, gave us a big smile when she opened the door. It was like coming home, and she wouldn't even let Daddy pay her. She said she welcomed Negro travelers because it was right to help each other out. I'm going to do the same one day. So in the 1950s, black people were referred to Negroes, and that word was acceptable at the time, but not today. What is the purpose of the Negro Motorist Green Book? The next morning, I hated to say goodbye to Mrs. Melody, but Daddy said we could would, we could be at Grandma's house that evening. That made me happy to go to get going again. It wasn't so easy, though. Our automobile broke down about midday in the middle of nowhere. People drove right past. I felt empty in the pit of my stomach. I hugged Brown Bear and wished we were already at Grandma's house. But Mama said not to worry. We could figure this out. She unfolded our map and told me the names of nearby towns. She said, Ruth, look in the green book and see if you can find a place in one, in one of those towns that will fix our car. And I did. Daddy gave me a big hug, and then we walked into town to find the garage that would help us. By the time we got to the car, got the car fixed, it was too late to reach Grandma's house that day. So I looked in the green book and picked out an inn nearby that said they welcome Negro travelers. It was a big house with lots of rooms. Most of the people that were businessmen traveling for their jobs, they were they each carried a green book. They said that they could never do their jobs without it. We met a salesman named Jason who has traveled to all the states of the Union for his job. He told us such, such funny stories. Mama laughed so hard she had tears rolling down her face. For the first time since we left home, we were really happy. Um... So having the green book has changed the family's trip. How was how have they used it so far? At the end, I met a little boy who was traveling with his mother. It was the first time he had ever left home, and I could just tell he was scared. I thought of Mrs. Melody, Victor Green, Eddie, and all the other people who had helped us. And then I decided to give Brown Bear to the boy. I told him that Brown Bear was a good traveler. I'm too old for Brown Bear now, and the little boy needed him more than I do. Then I told his mother about the green book and showed her uh, showed her our copy. That night before I went to sleep, I thought about our trip. It was not what I had expected. Traveling could be scary, that's for sure. It made me sad that some people were mean to Negroes. But it helped to know that good black people all over the country had patched, pitched in to help each other. It felt like I was part of our big family. Plus, tomorrow I could finally see Grandma and tell her what a great green book guide ha I had been. So what do you think the author and illustrator decided to end the story with a picture and no words. Oh,